This video is now in session. Uh, I want to do something different today. Instead of talking about the 2022 Senate elections, I'm going to talk about the political dynamics and the shifts of states. Now, I'm not going to be able to cover all states in this video because uh, there has never been a time, I guess, like in modern political history where there have been more swing states than now. We have a bunch. Nevada, Arizona, or like you know, the definition of swing state varies, but the, but the states that I think qualify, uh, the states that I think qualify as swing states are Nevada, Arizona, uh, Georgia, Florida, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, New Hampshire, Ohio, Iowa, um, and some even call it Colorado and Nevada, uh, not Nevada, I mean uh, Virginia and Maine second district as well as Nebraska second district. So that is a ton of electoral votes and that's a big chunk of the American population uh, that is part of swing states. So let's, uh, I'm going to go through a few of them. If you like this video, uh, then I will do a second part of this. And if I, if I need to do a third part of this, then I will. But let's start off with, uh, let's start off with Virginia. Virginia, I don't consider it as a swing state anymore. Um, it used to be a very uh, swingy swing state. Uh, that's not a good word. It used to be a uh, like a swing state. But Republicans have definitely dropped the ball when it comes to Virginian politics. Uh, if you look at 2000, Bush won it by, or actually, if you look, starting from 1976, Carter won pretty much every single state in the South besides Virginia. Gerald Ford was able to win Virginia by 1.3 percentage points, and that's because of the suburbanites in Fairfax County, who voted overwhelmingly for Republicans. And this continued on through the Reagan era, and even during Bill Clinton's uh, days in his presidency, where even though he was able to win states like Georgia, or West Virginia, or even Kentucky, uh, Virginia still stayed Republican. And and it stayed Republican even through the Bush years. But starting in the Obama years, it heavily swung towards Obama. And again, it's because of these uh, the Fairfax uh, suburban counties. Uh, uh, not Fairfax suburban counties. I mean, suburban counties like Fairfax. And as well as Richmond uh, suburbanites. Where uh, you know that people like Ab uh, Abigail Spanberger are at. And this continued through 2012, where Republicans tried to get Virginia, but they failed. And then in 2016, Republicans didn't try because Tim Kaine was the vice presidential candidate. And in 2020, they just did not try at all. And Biden was able to win by double digits. A Democrat able to win Virginia by double digits uh, since since 1976 and even probably even earlier on so that that's pretty good for democrats now let's look at the flip side of this and i'll take pennsylvania as the state to look at this uh, obviously i could look at uh, michigan or wisconsin but i'm not going to look at both states in this video mainly because i don't have enough time uh to fit it all within um like 15 or 12 minutes uh that my videos are usually at but i might do that in the next video so uh Bar in 2016, let's look at 2012, and we'll see how uh, how Trump was able to swing Pennsylvania a lot. Uh, if we keep going down 2008, 2004, 2000, 1996, and 1992, these are all years compa in comparison to 2020 where Pennsylvania has shifted for Republicans. And this is because uh, of two factors. Blue, uh, blue, um, blue collar workers in Pennsylvania used to vote pretty he uh, heavily towards Democrats, but Donald Trump, who is a great marketer, was able to swing a lot of these voters uh, to his party, to the Republican Party. And many of them stuck with the Republican Party even after 2016, even in the 2020 election. There were, there were massive shifts in uh, Philadelphia counties um, or Philadelphia suburban counties that out that counted the uh, growth Republicans had in Pennsylvania. But Pennsylvania is now officially a swing state, and it's probably going to be one of the most important swing states uh, in uh, the coming presidential elections. I'm just looking at uh, Maine right now. It's, it looks so weird. Maine, <laughs> Maine Biden grows by 0.72%, but Trump grows by 76.9% and 107.9%. Dang. Okay, let me, I'm gonna, yeah, um, let me not get too di distracted there. So yeah, uh, Pennsylvania is like a lot of the other um, 
it's like a lot of the other uh, Rust Belt states that are happening here, which is it's turning Republican. Uh, and a lot of it is thanks to Obama, but a lot of it is also, most of it is thanks to Trump. Uh, Iowa is turning more Republican. Uh, uh, Illinois is Repu- uh, turning more Republican. Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, uh, West Virginia, if you want to count it, Missouri, if you want to count it, all of these states are turning more Republican. Uh, so what are the states that are turning more democratic? Well, let's look towards the Sun Belt with, uh, let's look at Arizona. Okay, Arizona, um, it was scheduled to go democratic for some time now. If we, uh, if you remember the 2016 election, Hillary did campaign some amount in Arizona. She was obviously inept to, uh, do rallies in Arizona instead of rallies in Wisconsin or Michigan or Pennsylvania, but that was just her campaign. Actually, she did do a lot of rallies in Pennsylvania. I mean, just Michigan and Wisconsin, but uh, but uh, Arizona was targeted by Democrats in 2016, and as a result, it started to shift more towards Democrats. We can just look at this through the uh, through my uh, Google spreadsheet of Arizona, where it has ever since 2004 started to shift more for Democrats. And I think the thing that accelerated this shift was two things. Donald Trump and the Republican Party in Arizona. Uh, Donald Trump was uh, cri- criticizing John McCain uh, a lot throughout his career. And it really hurt uh, his chances in Arizona as a result. Because Arizonans love John McCain. Uh, and if you combine that with Republicans ineptitude with getting people like Martha McSally who lost in 20, the 2018 uh, Senate race to replace the other Arizona uh, Senate seat, uh, that's just like a, that, that, I mean, that was pretty stupid of them. It's just waiting or it's just wanting uh, to get that seat to become Democrats. Uh, if you, like, if you try to get a person who lost in a political race uh, to a similar seat, then there's barely any way that they're going to win in that other seat. So, uh, yeah, that's that. And they also censured Jeff Flake, uh, Doug Ducey, Cindy McCain, and John McCain, as I explained in uh, a previous video. So that really accelerated the Democrat strength in Arizona, and I think that will uh, continue to occur um, throughout the next uh, presidential elections, unless if the Republican Party in Arizona changed. But signs are showing that they are not going to change. So that is Arizona. A state that Democrats did think, though, that was going to go heavily toward, uh, towards them in future presidential elections is North Carolina. <clears throat> North Carolina, uh, in 2008, uh, Don, uh, not Donald Trump, uh, Barack Obama was able to flip uh, North Carolina in 2008, and from there, a lot of political pundits thought that North Carolina would, in the future, shift more and more democratic. If you just look at what's been going on, it's starting to shift more and more towards Democrats. But you see in 2012, Romney won it by 2 percentage points, and then Donald Trump won by 3.7 percentage points. So why is that, you may ask? Well, uh, obviously, there has been a lot of growth in North Carolina uh, for Democrats, especially in Mecklenburg County, where Charlotte is, and as well as the Research uh, Triangle area with Raleigh, uh, uh, Chapel Hill, and Durham. But at the same time, it's all counteracted by the rural, Republic, uh, the rural voters of North Carolina, which vote heavily towards Republican. Uh, and they started showing up more in presidential elections uh, elections after 2008 and as a result you see a lot of these counties that shift towards republicans because you have more republicans voting so that's how uh, democrats have not been able to win in north carolina now this will eventually be overpowered by democrats growth in north carolina trust me i mean uh, unless if something drastic changes then right now we're seeing uh, a lot of people from the Northeast and the Rust Belt who are moving to North Carolina, mainly millennials and black uh, and black Americans, and both groups tend to vote heavily towards Democrats. So you can expect both. Uh, you can expect North Carolina to become something like a Virginia, but it won't happen for maybe another decade or two. Uh, a lot of people thought North Carolina was going to become like the next Virginia, 
but uh, I mean, it will become the next Virginia, but it's just not going to be as fast for Democrats uh, because of the political dynamics in North Carolina. So now I'm going to talk about two more states, uh, and that's going to be, they're going to be Alaska and Texas. And let's just talk about Alaska first. Alaska, it isn't really a swing state, but I do think that it is going to become a swing state within the next two presidential elections. If we look at the political trends here, on average, uh, Democrats have been narrowing the margin that Republicans have been winning Alaska in, uh, in presidential elections by 4.2%. So if that keeps on going then start in the 2032 presidential elections uh which in political terms is not that far off uh but for in a regular person's terms it's pretty far off it will become democratic uh at least if uh, nothing else changes uh, and you can see here how uh, 2008 was really a sign of this. 2008, McCain won it by 21.5 percentage points, but that was less than uh, the amount that uh, George W. Bush won it by, which was 25.5 percent. And that's important because uh, the vice presidential candidate for John McCain's ticket was Sarah Palin, the governor of Alaska. So the fact that she was on the ticket and Alaska narrowed showed that Democrats really had a good chance to keep narrow in Alaska and uh, up until 2032. So why is this happening? There are two main things that are driving this force. The first is uh, Anchorage voters. A lot of Anchorage voters, are, are be, uh, a lot of the newer Anchorage voters are college educated, which heavily favors towards Democrats. Well, not heavily, but it does favor towards Democrats in Alaska. So you have these uh, communities in Anchorage who are college educated, who went to the University of uh, Alaska in Anchorage, who then are starting to vote for Democrats. Uh, uh, now, Alaska works really differently, so I have to zoom in as much as I can uh, for you to uh, to see the actual map here. But a lot of the uh, electoral districts, they don't, uh, they it, it's they don't. Uh, Alaska doesn't have counties, but they have electoral districts and um, boroughs. Uh, so for these electoral districts, you can see some of them are still Republican, and this is in Anchorage. So you think that it would be pretty Democratic, but Anchorage isn't quite a city yet. It is becoming more popula uh, populated, but uh, there are still parts where it is voting for uh, Republicans. But that has been narrowing since. Uh, yeah, just look at the shift from 2016. It has shifted a lot, and you can expect that shift to keep on happening because of another uh because of another key factor which is you have a lot of political operatives in alaska who are independents that caucus with the democrats and uh, they are trying to drive out uh, conservatives and how they do that is they get uh, they get normal uh, they get normal people from Alaska and then they recruit them and then uh, use them to win races in Alaska by having the independent name attached to them if they have a D name attached to them then they are obviously going to lose but if they have an I name attached to them and then they caucus with the Democrats when they become elected then they uh, suddenly be have a large a chance of winning. So that's how Democrats have been shifting Alaska. And finally, let's go to Texas. Texas, I'm going to talk about this quickly because I've talked about Texas a lot, but Texas has been shifting uh, for some time now. I expect Texas to become a swing state in the next election, especially if Kamala Harris chooses to run and Joe Biden chooses not to run. Where, uh, where we can expect Republicans to win in Texas by 2.3 percentage points. Uh, and the reason why the uh, margins in Texas weren't narrow, narrower was because Joe Biden didn't focus as much on Texas and as much on the Latino vote. So that's why they voted for Trump. But if you have a candidate like uh, Kamala Harris, then she'll definitely excite more of the Latino population, especially if a candidate like Donald Trump runs as the Republican Party, uh, Republican Party's ticket. So that's all I have to say for the political shifts that are happening uh, since the 2000 election and i'll see uh, this yeah i'll see you in the next one with a partisan opinion video this video is now adjourned